Father, we just want to thank you for all that you are. Even though we've only touched the hem of who you are, and even though we've only really saw glimpses of your beauty and your power and your glory and your fire and your holiness and, and who you are, Father, and although we don't really know you, we just know what other people have told us about you. And so slowly, Father, we're really moving into you, getting to know you from the original source as you portray your image to us, Father, as you are starting to, not because you never wanted to do it, but because your people were never ready to receive it. Your people were always waiting for someone else to tell them about you instead of going into your word, literally into your word and through your word into you. Father, I pray that as revelation starts growing in us and Father, as we start opening ourselves up for more of what you have, Father, as sons and daughters of you, of the Most High, that we will not just take dominion back on the earth, Father, but we will start walking in the different courts in the heavens, Father, that we will begin to understand that the court of angels is where you literally assign the mandates for the angelic realm, and we are to legislate those mandates to the earth. But we haven't done any of that because we are, in our ignorance, neglected all of that. But I believe this is the season, this is the time where your seven spirits have just been released to find sons and daughters and bring them up into the kingdom of heaven and teach them the pure revelation on what and who we are as sons in the kingdom of the most high God. And Father, in this time of training and equipping, we will walk in dimensions and we will see things and we will do things that the natural eye can't perceive, that the natural Christian can't perceive. That the natural man will think is demonic, will think that it's witchcraft, Father, but we as sons will know. And because of the image that we portray, those around us will, will get born again and, and saved. Even those who have been walking with you for many years will be born again. Father, we love you, we praise you, we thank you for revelation, we thank you for your spirit, the sweet, precious Holy Spirit that is so in and around, attached to, on top of, at the bottom of us to such an extent that he cannot be separated from us, Lord, that he's constantly pouring into us reflections of who you are, always purifying us, always opening us up for the angelic realm, opening us up for, for your glory and your presence and for revelation, Father, as our spirit returns from the kingdom of heaven, our, the Holy Spirit is always there to open up our souls to receive what, what, what my spirit's been doing. Father, I thank you for this season, this time, and it's so exciting. We love you, Lord. We praise you and we thank you for who you are. Thank you that we can be in the name. Amen. Amen. Okay, now, everyone's still alive. <laughs> I, uh, I was in a very interesting meeting um, last night. A uh, young man, well, not a young man, he's an elderly man, more mature man. Um, and he was prophesying some really nice things over me. I, I don't particularly like being prophesied over. I'm sure most of you in this room feel the same way. Um, you know, we can, can kind of hear from God for ourselves. But when God does choose someone to speak over your life, um, it is exciting, right? Because that's what prophecy is supposed to do. It's supposed to encourage and uplift. And, and that's really the working of the Holy Spirit. And uh, I was encouraged on what he said, that the Father will bring even more revelation and that the Father will bring a great understanding of what I'm busy seeing and what I'm busy walking in. And he said something that I was really excited about. He said that there will be a specific sign that will follow every single meeting I'm in. And it will be how people know me. And so I am excited to find that out or to find how what it's going to work and what's going to happen. But, but anyway, um, I'm just excited. I don't know if you guys feel the same. It's, it's a shift that's taken place in the spirit, and uh, you know, my sight has just grown so much, and I've been able to see so much more. I've been communicating with, with, with the angelic realm, and uh, they have spoken so much to me, and uh, it's just time for us to be activated as sons and daughters of the Most High and to go and do what needs to be done. You know, we have been taught to just be Christians, but that's not what he's wanting to release. That's never, it was never his intention. For us to just be, you know, because that's not what he created us to, to do. He created us to, to walk with him, to do what he does, and greater. And, and we don't always understand what he means when he says do greater things, because we think, well, that's going to take glory from him. No, 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 that's going to give him glory. Because if a son does more and greater works than the father, the father is glorified. Yeah. So that's really exciting. I'm excited, and... Uh, um, Anyway, let's, let's go from there.
let me just find my notes. I, I, I had literally had no idea what I was going to minister on tonight. Because there's so many subjects and there's so many things. And, and so, and the Father uh, told me to do the, the, the three-part man. And just, it'll take us about three weeks, maybe longer. It depends on how it, it goes while we're busy doing it. But the idea is... It's to break the man up, body, soul, spirit, to, to start having an understanding of what the spirit is, have an understanding of what the soul is, and have an understanding of what the body is. Because we've neglected the body, and because we thought the body was lesser. Just like some in the, in the Christian faith believe that, believe that Jesus is the lesser of the three, which is ridiculous. Um, I've heard even great men of God that I love and look up to say the same thing. And it's not true. Do you guys understand that? There's an equality, if there's such a word, that the natural can't perceive when it comes to the body of Christ. When it comes to um, me, my, my spirit can never be greater than my body. I can't do nothing without my body. But I can't not do nothing without my spirit. And my soul is that which holds the two together. I can't do anything without my soul. So we get, begin to understand that my soul is the reflection or the image of my spirit, just like my spirit is the image of Yahweh. And then, of course, my, my, my body is the slave to my soul. So wherever my soul is attached to, which is to my spirit, but my spirit is dead, so my, my, my body just does everything the soul does. So if I drive past McDonald's, I'll stop. Right? <laughs> but if I have my spirit leading and I drive past McDonald's, I'll bind Satan. I'm going to get sued by McDonald's. I'm just, I'm just joking. But uh, just, just begin to understand that my body was led by my soul. And because they are linked together, it was all about the senses, all about what I feel, all about what I smell, all about what I want right now. And if I can't have it, then I'll have a tantrum. You guys know, know what a tantrum is? Yes. And so when I, when I switch over from being a soulish Christian or soulish being to being a spirit being, then everything changes because the spirit is attached to Yahweh. Just like the soul and the body is attached. Okay, so we're going to start, I'm going to just kind of go through the whole spirit thing. Obviously, we start with the spirit because that's where it all originated. I um, had someone last night tell me that the, the word image, when, when, when the father said that we were created in his image, that word image, and I read it in the um, dictionary, and it's partially true. It means reflection. It means exact opposite. Now, it's not the exact opposite, because if you carry on reading the definition, it means representative. So when he says he's made me in his image, he's made me his rep, that I need to represent him, and I can't represent somebody I don't have in my, in my eyesight, in my, in my full knowledge. So if I work for a company, for example, I work for a company called uh, Samsung. Uh, I worked for Samsung for quite a while in South Africa, but I did telephone systems. And the idea of a good sales rep is knowing the product you sell. And the better you know the product, the easier it is to sell the product. And of course, the, the idea with the, the product is that you have to use the product. So we'll go through training where we literally spend time behind the, um, the, 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 can I say, the telephone system and get to know every aspect of it, how to switch from one line to another, how to, to shorten the calls, how to send it to wherever it needs to go, all the different things. And so the more knowledge you have, the better you can represent the company and understand that through this representation, the one receiving what you're saying will have a greater understanding of the product and will want it. Yeah. Because it's the same thing when the Father says, I made you in my image, which means you are, are to represent me. I have given you everything you need to, to know. You must reflect me. Okay, exciting, isn't it? Um, let's go to 1 Thessalonians. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now I'm going to focus on the spirit tonight, but I just need you to have an understanding that, that it's about my whole being being in unity. If I have my spirit on fire for Messiah, for the Messiah, and I'm studying the word and I'm pressing in, but my soul is not repenting, which means my way of thinking is not changing, and my body is, is, is not affected by, by my, my spirit, then I'm just going to carry on being what I am. It's not going to bring me to that place of fullness. My being is in division. Does that make sense? 
So if my being's in division, then there's a problem. Why? Because they're not thinking the same. That's why my spirit has to be in charge in Christ, in me, so that my, the rest of my being can shift from, from my soul being the leader to where my spirit's the leader. And so my, my, my body starts doing what my spirit tells my soul to do. But it all happens and takes place in Christ as Holy Spirit keeps me open, comforting me, guiding me, leading me, teaching me. So none of what's happening is taking place outside of the Trinity. But the idea is, the Father says, you are the CEO. Or I'm the CEO, you're the manager. You have to manage your being and bring it to a place of unity so that there's fullness. But the Spirit is probably, like I always say, the Spirit was created to be the host. Adam had his body and soul deep on the inside of him. And the process was, I um, create man in my image. We create man in our image, and there was man, right? That's just logic. I mean, God said that there'd be light, so there was light. So if He says, let us make, create man in our image, there was man. But then only later, He formed us out of the dust of the earth, and then blew uh, Ruach into our nostrils, and He said, we became a living soul. So there's a process that took place. It was first spirit, then body, then soul. Okay? So I don't want to go into too much detail regarding that, but I need you to understand that the process of uh, who I am is found in my spirit. That's why my spirit being, I wouldn't say it's the most important, but it's the one that if it activates, can bring all the revelation that the rest of my being needs. Because I have to, although the blood of Yeshua has already done it, I have to get back to my original spot, my original place. Now I just quickly want to say something, uh, just so that you know that in the, in the kingdom of heaven, we had Eden, then we had the garden in Eden, then we had earth, and from Eden we had the kingdom of God. Okay, so uh, the, 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 um, the paradise, the garden in Eden, so it wasn't, it wasn't Eden, it was a garden in Eden, that reflected earth. And this is just logic. Then Eden reflected the kingdom of heaven. So when Adam and Eve sinned, they no longer had access from earth to the, to the uh, paradise, to Eden, to the kingdom of heaven. That's why we have to go through the process of being born again. Because he said, if you eat of this fruit, you will die. And so they ate of the fruit, and then he said, well, because this happened, you will be soulish. You will no longer have access into the supernatural. You will only have access in the natural. So you will work the sweat of your brow. It's changed. Everything changes. And he gave you skins. And we've spoken about this before in other subjects. But the idea is that he clothed us in three layers of skin. Which means before that, I did not have skin. I had a glorified body. Now, if we think about this, the 40 days Jesus walked the earth, it was his whole being, the example of who I'm meant to be, walking the earth. And in the time that he walked the earth, the 34 years or 35 years, we never really know, between 33 and 34 years, he walked as a spirit being. Although he was physical and he could eat and he could drink, there was a shift in his body because he could do things that no natural man can do. He did things that only the super spiritual in the body of Christ did, like Enoch, Elijah, Elijah, and those men. He did things that was almost... Beyond we can even perceive. He walked through people, he disappeared, he appeared, and he changed shape. Do you guys know that? Yeah. I mean, when he came back after the resurrection, he, he, the, the lady that was so close to him didn't recognize him. She thought he was the gardener. And so the idea with Jesus being a spirit being is that his spirit hosted his soul and his body. Okay, but in, in our case, we've been taught and trained that my body is my host. Now you guys understand the whole host thing. It's not demonic and it's not new age. Host is just the place where my spirit lives in. So my body is my temple. But that's not what the Father wants for us. That's not the original. So when I, I get born again and I step into Christ, that shift needs to take place. But of course, I can't shift into something I don't know is there. I can't do something that I don't understand. I can't do something I don't have revelation of. And of course, there's no teaching like this in the Word, so the, or not in the Word, but in the body of Christ. So the idea is that I have to really go hunt. I have to go deeper and deeper and deeper, and I have to go beyond the natural to find how do I do this. That's why, for me personally, um, it took me many years to get to 
And that's understanding too. I just have a, a mild understanding of who my spirit being is. Because my spirit being literally freaks me out. I was looking at myself in the spirit the other day, and I had a, a blue flamed skin. Yes. Now, I don't know how to explain that. I had a blue flamed skin, and on the inside of the blue flamed skin were the red flamed insides. My eyes was, 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 was uh, light. Uh, it was just phenomenal. I looked at myself in the spirit, and I thought to myself, who is that? I had a, a shield, and I had a sword, and I was clothed in a robe, and I looked completely different. If I looked at myself, I would say, who are you? But I have to begin to see who my spirit being is, because it's not just in the image, it's in the fullness of who Christ is. It's in the fullness of who Yahweh is. And so as I slowly begin to understand and walk in that, <coughs> I begin to understand what needs to come back into my soul, what needs to come back into my, into my body. Okay, so it's a slow process. We've done Hebrews 12 before, but I'm just quickly going to read it. For the Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is the discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. Now again, the Word of God... We have to remind ourselves constantly because we have the mentality of the Word of God is just the Bible. The Word of God is just a third. You know, the Bible is just a third of the Word of God. There's a three-dimensional Word and within the three dimensions, there's more dimensions. Because in the Old Testament, there's, there's layers of understanding, there's layers of revelation that can be broken up into different segments, which means you can read one scripture and then you can go back at it and read it through a different eyesight. A different dimension, a different realm. And that's why the Father's given me my spirit access to getting born again so that I can go in to the Word because the Word is alive. And if the Word is alive, then that means I can go into it. And the Word is spirit. Now, I'm saying this because we know this. And as, as the Word, and I'm just throwing it out there, everything has a body, a soul, and a spirit. The city we live in has a body, soul, and spirit. The... Um, it's just almost everything that's alive, everything that has movement in it, has a body, soul, and spirit. Now, not the fullness of like what I have and what you have, but the idea is uh, a city has a world of mind and emotion. A city has a body of people. A city has a spirit that, that rules it or runs it. And so we just begin to understand that the Word of God has uh, um, body, soul, and spirit. And I've got the, the body, which is the actual written Word. I've got the soul, which is the illuminated word, that which comes alive inside of me. And then, of course, I've got the, um, the spirit, which is Yeshua. You guys okay? That's the living. That's where I can go into him. And as I go into him with my spirit being, he starts pouring into me revelation of his word. So I take the three-dimensional word and study it. That's what the divides soul and spirit. It's going into him with my spirit being. Now, I don't want to lose you guys. I want you to understand that my spirit is always in Christ. And it's the fullness of my spirit in Christ that gives me access to go into the spirit realm. And when I go into the spirit realm, I always say that that's where you have to live. And you can't be in two places at the same time. Uh, because before you were born again, you didn't have a spirit. Your spirit was just giving life to your soul and your body. So you functioned without a spirit. You functioned just soul and just body. And you were perfectly normal. But now we get born again and we think, well, my, my spirit has to stay on the earth, walk to and fro, and it's always going to be attached to my body. It doesn't have free access. But let me tell you something. I can, as a spirit being, walk in the kingdom of heaven while my soul and my body functions 100% normal on the earth. It means I can have a normal day, and when I come to a place of rest, my spirit will start pouring into my soul what it was doing the rest of the day. Sometimes I would start soaking in the morning and I would start experiencing all kinds of visions and it will just be encounter after encounter and I wouldn't always understand what's going on but then the Father would remind me that my spirit's been in the kingdom of heaven while I was going by my day. And then my spirit is slowly trying to relate to my soul what it's been doing. Do you guys understand that? Because the spirit knows all things. Now, of course, the Spirit grows in knowledge. The Spirit can grow in understanding, grow in knowledge, because the Spirit sits with the seven spirits as they train and equip Him so that He can bring all of that knowledge back into my soul. Because my soul is the one that rejects all this. 
That's why you sit in this classroom and you will say, wow, this is amazing. I love this stuff. Let's pour in. And then when you get home, you'll start thinking with your, with your soul. And you go, but, but this I didn't. I can't find this in the Bible. This I don't read. And I, when I read it, that doesn't make sense to me. So then you start working it out with your soul. And that's the process where Holy Spirit comes in to open up your, spirit, your soul so your spirit can relate to your soul what has been given through the Spirit of God. It's a process of learning. It's a process of pushing in and persevering that which you don't know, that which you don't understand. You know, I'll give you an example. Well, not an example. I just wanted to say that everything we know about God up to this point is given and related to us through someone else. You know, so we have someone else's perception of the Word. Now, I'm not talking about everybody, but most of us. We have a, a, another man's perception of the Word. So I give something that comes from the Spirit of God. You reject it because you can't find it in the Word, but it's because of your perception of the Word that you can't find it. It's there. Everything I've spoken over the last three months is in the Word. But we have a perception of the Word, so our perception blocks the truth. That's why God's people are not free. Because we, are, we have a knowledge of the Word through someone, else, through someone else's perception. But when you start finding the Word for yourself, this is why the Bible or the, the book that He gave us is the, that which holds everything together. That's why if you, do not, if you are not born again, you can read it until you turn blue in your face. It means nothing. It's a contradiction. It doesn't make any sense. When you get born again, all of a sudden there's a light upon you and it brings life to you. But it doesn't stop there because if you just read it, just meditate on it, if you just study it, it becomes doctrine. And doctrine binds you. It brings you back to a place of religion. Because our perception is not going to give us the full truth of it. But when I allow my spirit to be divided from my soul, my spirit goes in. And my spirit becomes actively involved in the kingdom. And I have a blueprint. And I read, my, I read with my spirit, which is the Bible talks about this. It says, as a man thinks in his heart. And heart always relates to the spirit. As a man thinks in his heart, so he'll be. So as I start thinking, not with my mind or my brain, but with my spirit, then things start shifting. Because now what I can do, because my spirit's free from my soul, I can literally read the Word and I can go into the Word. Now, I don't know if you guys have done this. I've teached a little bit on it, so I've expect, I would expect you to have done it. While you read the Word, let your spirit go into it. Let's see, we've always believed that the timeline is horizontal. But the timeline is vertical. Which means everything happens at the same time. Does that freak you out a little bit? How did Moses write Genesis? How did Moses write the three, the five books of the Torah? How is it possible that he went back into the future to see all that happened and wrote all of it? <laughs> Father is very clear. He says, the kingdom of God is at hand. And, and, and look at Isaiah. As he prophesies Yeshua, and it's just too accurate. It's just too phenomenal to think that it's just something that popped into his spirit. Because it's all happened before. That's why I said Jesus was crucified before the foundations of the earth. But it all happens on a timeline, all at the exact same time. That's why Moses could be with his hands in the air and at the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus. You guys understand that you're looking at me with a ton of ways. But I just, I just need you to understand... That, that's why when I go into the Spirit, there's no time and space. That's why when I go into the Spirit, into the Word, I can be anywhere and everywhere at all times. That's why if I want to know how is it possible for an axe head to, 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 to drift on water, I read it, I can go into it. <coughs> I can literally be there, see it. And I understand this because I met, met with, uh, with, with uh, Noah, and as he shook my hand... His whole life was downloaded into me. I literally went into every aspect of his life for a split second. And the Father downloaded into me all that he's done. Because I asked him what made him so special. Why was he the one that will carry all the generations to come? What was it about him? And the Father showed me his DNA and the lineage that he comes from. And all that he's done. Why did that the Bible talks about the fact that in the, in the end times that it will be like the days of Noah. What make him so special? Well, I would rather say let the end times be like the days of Enoch. 
I don't, I don't, because my perception is, well, I, 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 we don't want alcoholics in the body of Christ. Sorry. You know, we don't want alcoholics in the body of Christ. We don't want the mess that I see in his life. When I look at Enoch, there's nothing, that, that's, there's anything about him. He's this phenomenal guy that pleased God with all of his faith, and he just went in and out of heaven with everyone, and still today appears and disappears as he wolves, because he hasn't died. I would say, well, let that be the example. But no, it says the end days will be like the days of Noah. And our perception immediately is, well, it's going to be sin-driven. But when I took his hand, that's not what the Father showed. Sin was not even part of anything that was downloaded. As a matter of fact, he died when he was 950. He had his first son when he was 500. And we can't even begin to fathom that. As it was in the days of Noah, so will we again today. What are you talking about, Gustav? I am created to live forever. Scientists has proven it today that the body of, of a human being is supposed to regenerate himself completely every seven years. Which means if they look at the design of the body, it's supposed to regenerate itself every seven years. So in essence, it can live forever. But because all the rubbish we take in, all the rubbish that goes into our food, our body is not regenerating itself. That's why we're growing older. That's why we're getting sick and that's why we die. Now, we can say, well, it's because of the curse after um, Noah, right? But then remind yourself just quickly, but because of what Jesus did on the cross, I am restored back into my original state. Now, my body can't perceive becoming a thousand years old. My body can't even perceive going a hundred. And my soul can't perceive that either. So I have to shift the responsibility to my spirit. Because my spirit had to stand on the, the edge of the, of the kingdom of heaven just before I was sent into my mother's womb and agree to my, my mantle, agree to that which I have uh, um, my call. I had to agree to what the Father has poured into me. And as I went into my, the, mother, the womb of my mother and I begin my life, I had to go through that process of becoming what He's destined me to do. Now again, He didn't just destine me to get born again. He destined me to shift the nation back into place. He's destined me to slay dragons and giants in the spirit. He's destined me to release his angelic realm. He's destined me to co-rule heavens with him. He's destined me back into him before I came out of him. Exciting, isn't it? Yeah. In, in Deuteronomy uh, 6 verse 4 and 5 says, <clears throat> Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou have uh, loved the Lord with all your heart, mind, body, soul, and strength. See, he is one God, just like I am one person, but I have to love him with all my mind, body, soul, and strength. Which means I have to love him with all that I am. And if I have to love him with all that I am, I have to remind myself that there's more to him than just one. And when I begin to understand that that which, which I have is just like that which He is, and I start taking my spirit being into Him, that's what cleanses me, that's what purifies me, that's what makes me holy. And of course the blood did that, but the blood gave me access to constantly walk in freedom, constantly walk in the, clean, the, the, the holiness and cleansiness that the Father pours into us. Does that make sense? So His desire has always been for us to understand that He created me as a spirit being to love Him with all, his, all my mind, body, soul and strength and to shift myself back through the, 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 the indwelling of the spirit inside of me, through the, the blood of Yeshua behind the veil, going behind the veil, becoming exactly that which I'm supposed to be again and it's a spirit being and to rule the rest of my being from my spirit. I'm trying to make as much sense of this as I can. <laughs> that, that's, that, no, that's nice, Gustav. In Mark 12 it says, And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, and uh, perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, um, which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, and the first of all commandment is, Hear, O Israel, <laughs> the Lord our God is one, and thou shalt love thy Lord your God with all your heart, mind, body, soul, and strength. It's almost like the Father's desire for us is to understand that I cannot love Him like this, lest my spirit man is in Him. Because my, it's insanity 
without my spirit in him, my soul and my body trying to love him like this, it's impossible. It's, it, it's insanity. It'll all be done by works. So I will feel that I love him because I'm praying. I'll feel that I love him like this because I'm working at it. I'm reading the Bible. But when I go into the spirit like he is spirit, like he says, if you worship me, worship me in spirit and in truth. That dimension that I have to shift into to go sit before him, to go hold him and hug him and spend time with him. I always say when I go and, and have him, I, I hold him, I kiss him in the neck and he kisses me in the, in the neck. But I need you to understand that it goes beyond the natural because that's my per perception of intimacy. It's hugging and kissing and whatever goes with that. But in the spirit, it's not like that. In the spirit, I, 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 I do hugs and kisses because that's where I'm at. But he goes beyond physical contact. He goes where my spirit and his spirit entwines and becomes one. Where it literally sows into each other and there's no separation. When he lifts his arm, I'm lifting mine. When I lift my arm, he's lifting his. It is that coexistence with him. Coexistence in the sense that I do all that he does and he does all that I do. That's why sin is an abomination to the Father because whatever I do, he is doing. Now I know you say, well that's not true because he can't sin, but he's in me. His promise is I'm never going to leave you nor forsake you. So if his spirit and his, his, his son and him is one, then when I'm sinning and he's in me and he's filled me up, then he has to do the same thing. That's why it's such an abomination to him. And he's constantly saying, if you're constantly doing this, don't you understand that you're just crucifying my son again? You're bringing me back to the place? That's why if I go into the kingdom of heaven with my spirit, it purifies me. That's what happens to the lamb when he goes to the priest. He gets slaughtered and cleaned out. He can't clean himself out. He has to go to the priest. Well, I don't think he actually willingly goes to the priest. I think it's... Um, uh, all kinds of noises coming from him and he realizes what's about to happen to him. But we have a choice. And so when we go into the kingdom of heaven with my spirit being, the Father has the capacity to clean me up. And that is his desire. Right. Um, John 4, 24. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. This is just the essence of, of why he created us. He created us to worship him. We know, we know this stuff. He created us to worship Him. He created us to love Him. He created us to be one with Him. And so when we want to go into that place, it has to take place in the Spirit. It happens in the Spirit first. Let's remind yourself quickly, we're talking about the Spirit. And as we carry on over the next three weeks, you'll realize how all three, body, soul, and spirit, kind of has to fall into place for it all to become what He wants it to be. It's a process of becoming glorified before we die. And then, of course, to get the, the, the whole understanding of death completely out of your system so that we don't have to die. Because, of course, most of us in this room will probably die. Because it's not something we can believe. Now, we might, might, by the mercy and grace of God, shift in our thinking and move beyond what we've believed and that's what has been hammered into us, that I can, uh, my physical body has to die. But I have to remind myself, well, I'm sorry, Lord, I don't particularly care what anybody says, because if that guy didn't die, and that guy didn't die, then you better know that I'm not going to die. Do, do, am, I, am I being arrogant? It just makes sense. What makes them so special? I know the works I put in, not the works in the sense... Um, of, of doing things to please God. I, I, I know the work I put in, in intimacy and how much I soak in Him and I study His Word and I, I, I propel myself by the Spirit of God into the things of Him. And I can't settle for anything less. I'm not going to settle for a hundred years. And as a matter of fact, by the end of, 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 I don't know what, 10, 20 years from now, I want to go in daily. And I've said before, there's people that's going in today with their whole bodies. They're going to go Google Mark Steen. He's literally, he goes in two, three days a week into the kingdom of heaven with his whole body. He disappears off the face of the earth. He's gone. So what are, what, what are we doing wrong? <laughs> it's a process of learning. The Father wants to take us deep in. In Ezekiel 36, he says, A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take the old stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. It is the Father's heart. It is his desire to take that dead spirit that had no life in it, that can only give life to the soul and body, and replace it, re 
create it, make it exactly what it's supposed to be so that the fullness of God can be replaced into a being that needs to shift into that which is destined to be. Are you guys okay? John 3, 1 to 7. There was a man at, uh, um, of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. So it's now, okay, we, we know the story. Uh, Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is already old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered him, He most assuredly, I say to you, unless he is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter uh, the kingdom of God. Hmm, interesting. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, that which is born of spirit is spirit. Do not marvel at what I say, you must be born again. That is just logic. If you want to see the kingdom of heaven, if you want to walk in the fullness of what the Father has for you, that born again state has to be a reality. And when I'm born again, it means that that which was is no longer. The old has passed away and shifted. The new gives a birth to a creation that was not on the face of the earth before. That which I am now because of Yeshua has never been. Which means I'm different than even Jesus. Does that freak you out a little bit? Because he was a specific kind. But because I can get born again because of what he did, none other generation before Jesus can have what we have today. It is a complete new creation. It goes deeper than what Adam and Eve could ever go. Because we have the capacity to be in Jesus and go back into them before the was, was, the was. Yeah, I don't know what I just said, but it goes deeper. Because when he said, let us make man, we came out of him. And his desire for us is to be that intimate with him once again, which means going back into him. That's why the, the, the sight was pierced. Blood and water equals birth. Not always, but uh, that's what it, I think represented because it's it's the law first mentioned. You know, the father took out of the side of man the bride, so then the law first mentioned goes back at that point where the side was open and bride was taken out. And so if the bride was taken out and there's space, the bride can go back in. And the bride can go in and out because Jesus is the door. <coughs> then it's time for us to go in and out. All right? <laughs> you guys okay? Yeah. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I love this because in my life, if I look at the dimensions that the Father has opened, I'm talking four years. I just found a, a, um, <clears throat> a, a memory on my, on my Facebook page of the very first meeting I had in America. It was only 11 minutes. <coughs> I've ministered for much longer, but uh, the clip was 11 minutes. And um, I was just reminded of what I knew then and what I know now, four years ago. It's not even the same message. I almost feel that I will never preach that again. I will never be able to prophesy like that again because it's shifted. It's brought a, a, a new creation out. Now, I've already been born again for 15 years before that happened. So what are you talking about? I wouldn't say this is a rebirth. But the revelation that came enlightened the being. Right. Yeah. It, it, it made me understand greater things. It opened up doors that I didn't know existed. Because when your spirit and your soul is divided, thank you very much, young lady. When your spirit and your soul is divided and my spirit is all of a sudden free, it can literally go see the Father. Whereas before that, I couldn't see the Father. Because first of all, my theology wouldn't let me see the Father. My theology taught me that if I see the Father, I will surely die. Yet I have missed all the scriptures that says that Moses spoke to him face to face. And then we read in that same scripture that it says, you can never see me face to face without studying the word and what it originally meant. Which, by the way, means you will never know me before time was time. Because he's speaking to him face to face, so much so that after the 40 days he comes walking down the mountain and his face is changing ox, lion, eagle, man, lightning, thunder. So much so that the, the nation is in awe. They hang on every word he says and then as the glory fades, he covers his face. So they can't see the glory fading because if they, if they see it fading, they don't listen to him. We have... 
that glory all the time. Because we have the capacity to go into the mountain of the Lord at all time and behold the image of Yahweh. Sit with Him. Walk with Him. Come back with that image reflecting. I was, I was uh, um, listening to some comments on my, on my YouTube and one of the guys said, says, I am sure I saw your face changing to a lion. I'm either thinking, am I that ugly? Or are you smoking something? But I, I, I felt that so many times. That because I, I, and I'm not boasting in anything I do, but I sometimes find myself so deep in the Father and the Spirit, especially when I'm soaking. Sometimes I'm so drunk I don't know what's going on, and I literally go in and out of the Spirit realm so intensely that I feel that I bring some of that back. And because I behold His face, and the Bible is very clear, what you behold, you become. Yes. And that image is the Father's desire for us to carry. And when my spirit man comes back into my soul, and there'll be a day, and, it have, and I have experienced very, very seldom, but I have experienced some of these moments where my spirit and my soul goes into the kingdom of heaven, which means my body stays behind. And in this time, this, the, the visions or the encounter is so extremely vivid that it makes it so much more real. And that's an increase, and it changes daily because it happened once, and then it happens again two or three times a couple of weeks ago, and it's happening more and more. Because the idea is, always has been for my spirit to come back and bring my soul, my body in with it. Because that's my home. And it's like a part of me goes to visit Yahweh and the rest is to stay behind because it's ignorant. So as I grow and as I propel deeper and deeper into the things of God, slowly but surely, I will, I will start believing this stuff. And I, I, I mean, I, I believe that we are slowly but surely catching. I have a daughter in the spirit. She comes here every now and then. And just look at her, how she has grown over the last two years since we met. And, and her listening to these teachings and going in and engaging with the Father. How she has changed and how she has matured. And never mind that. Because of her, because of her growing, I have access into a new court in the kingdom of heaven. The court of the kings. Now, I haven't had spent much time there yet. And I don't know exactly, I know it's, you can only go in there once you've led someone to maturity. And I mean, I've had I've many sons and daughters, but it's very difficult to lead someone to maturity because you can't make them do it. Right. And I can teach you the stuff that's in my heart because I can literally only te teach you what I have. But I can't make you do it. Like they're saying, you can lead a horse to the water, but you can't make him drink. Right. And that's the thing, that's the problem. I, mean, I can try everything in my power, but when someone literally goes in and starts doing it, everything changes in their lives. Everything. And I believe that's exactly what happened to me. I look in the Spirit nowadays, and I don't have to close my eyes and look in the Spirit. I can look at anybody at any time and see all kinds of stuff. Not because I'm a seer. It has nothing to do with that. It's not a gift. It's not an office. It's just seeing in the Spirit. It's what's available to any son. Now, I make this very clear, because it's available to sons and daughters. It's available to kings and priests. It's av available to... to um, Oracles and legislators. It's not, uh, it's not there for, for, for servants. It's not, it's not there for bond servants. And that's what we've been taught. We've been taught that you're a mere servant of God. But that's a perception that we need to break away from. Because the Father wants me to step even beyond just adoption. Because if you're adopted, you still have the mentality that it's my stepfather. But He wants us to go beyond that. And begin to understand that my spirit is not just adopted, my spirit is one with him. And that's the knowledge that I bring back into the rest of my being. That's the knowledge that I pour back into who I am. So that the fullness of what the Father wants to release can be poured into my being. And I, I've shared this vision before, I'm just quickly going to go through it again. I was standing on the mountain of gold in the kingdom of heaven. And it's massive, it's beyond what you can begin to fathom, it's huge. You know, you think of a mountain, it's bigger than a mountain that you can think of. <laughs> it's not as high as Everest, but it's just massive. And, and you say, I think, I'd say it's gold, but it's not, probably not gold, it's just that there's no shadow. It's just light. And so I'm on this, on, on this uh, mountain, and, and I know for a fact all my being wants to do is go down, because there's a, 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 a I would say, a lake, but out of the lake there's uh, four rivers flowing or four streams flowing out. Now at first I just saw three and in, okay anyway, so I jumped off the mountain, I go into the water and it's a very freaky experience because my spirit is vividly aware of what's happening around me and the water just flows right through me. And 
and it's also see-through, so I can look to the bottom. It's not water. I thought it was liquid gold, but my understanding of liquid gold will be lava, and you won't be able to even touch it or go near it, but yet it was cold and refreshing. And, and even when I was in the water, it was like for the first time I could really breathe. So I don't know exactly what it was, and I don't know exactly how to explain it, but in the water and at the bottom, um, there was there was scrolls, there was um, books, there was... Uh, revelations of wisdom and knowledge. There was gold nuggets. There was all kinds of uh, rubies and diamonds and, and stones of, of much value. There was power. I don't know how to explain what I saw when I say there was power. There was, there was lightning and thunder. It was something that, that my body was attracted to. And, so, and, um, and then from there, the streams came out. There was four streams, but I was focused on three streams at first. And the Father said to me, the first stream is for my spirit. And... Um, The gold and the diamonds and the ruby and the valuable stones all flowed into that stream, and my spirit was drawn to it. And um, then the second stream was where all the, all the books and the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding and the revelation all flew in, flow into this uh, stream, and my soul was attracted to that stream. And then the, the body stream was where all the power and the lightning and the, the fire and the strength, I don't know how to explain that, all of that flew into that um, uh, stream, and then I started seeing a fourth stream, and I didn't understand what that was, because I'm a three-part being, so that wouldn't make any sense to me, and then the Father slowly started teaching me each individual stream, and how my soul needs to engage, and how my spirit needs to engage, and how my body needs to engage, and then when it is engaged in its fullness, and receives all that the Father has, the, it births, in itself, it births the glor glorified Christ. And the glorified Christ in me gives me a whole different being. And that stream is where the Father wants His sons and His daughters to literally go in. Because that leads to that place where He's called His bride to walk in. And I don't know exactly how to explain that in, in a greater form of detail, because obviously there was greater detail in it, because I can go back into that vision and see more and more, and I do that all the time. But the idea was that for me to become that glorified being, my spirit man has to receive all the riches that the Father has for me. And it can't receive any of the riches lest I step into that place, lest I allow the Father to draw me in daily, you know, we have been taught, because if I look at Paul's life, he was taken up into the Spirit. And, and, and it's the way that he said it, once, maybe twice. I look at John, uh, the way we read and understand it, he was taken into the Spirit once or twice. And it wasn't at free will. Okay, but I don't think that what was written down was, it was just certain things. Because I can't talk about everything. I have experienced. I can't tell you about all the times that I've went into the kingdom of heaven. I, there's just too many. There's just too many things that I've experienced, too many things that I've seen. And I'm still working through most of it because most of it makes no sense. But I just, my, my, my natural can't perceive it, so I can't bring it into a place of, of sharing it with anybody because I don't understand it. And so, as I begin to understand slowly but surely, obviously, we, we share more, we give more. But um, what was I talking about? Anybody? <laughs> I was talking about the rivers. I was talking about being glorified. Um, I always, I always say this, and, and people probably just think I'm just losing my train of thought. But, but when you talk about this stuff, you, you go into it, mm -hmm. and my, my soul would just go in there with me, and then I come back, and it's like, wait, what were you talking about? Because my body has no recollection or understanding of what is happening. The, the, the shift that the Father needs us to take place is a, a dimensional understanding of who I am, that my spirit has access all the time, and my spirit gets taught and trained to such a degree that I can know things that I can't talk about, because the things I've experienced in the spirit realm, I don't know how to put it into words yet, but some of it I do, just like Paul, he says that, uh, uh, he, comes, uh, he comes back and he says, the things I saw I could not utter, it's lawful, lawful for me to utter, but then he writes the three quarters of the New Testament. So that which he was allowed to, to write uh, changed our lives. The, the stuff he couldn't, wasn't probably because he wasn't allowed to, but he just had no perception for it. He had no understanding of what he was seeing. And so I'm saying, you know, maybe they, they, they did go. Like John, I believe John went in all the time. I mean, he was that close to Jesus, and he had a perception of the Spirit. 
I believe that John never died. Now, I might be wrong, but I believe that he never died. I believe that he just, I mean, they put him in boiling oil. And he thought it was a jacuzzi. And so, I mean, there was just something different about him. And he always made statements like, like um, John, the disciple Jesus loved most. He probably wrote that himself. Because he just had an intimacy. And I believe that he was in and out, taken in and out, just like Paul. I don't believe there was just one vision. It was, it was as well. Whenever I want to, because the access was made through the blood. Yes. And I just slowly want to bring that across. That's why there's a, rep- there's a lot of repetition in spirit school. I mean, I listen to some messages. I, even today, if I listen to um, Bill Johnson, you ever listen to Bill Johnson's messages? I mean, you have to listen to it a hundred times just to make any sense of it. Because he just goes that deep into the Word. Uh, Ian Clayton, I mean, you have to literally listen to some of the things he teaches a hundred times. And then still you think, What? Justin Abraham, I'm just, there's just so many people out there that's, that's talking of stuff that the natural cannot perceive. And, and, and you can't even just listen to these guys and think you can, we can bring that across. You have to go in to the Spirit yourself. You have to experience the fullness. You have to build on intimacy and relationship with the Father behind the natural. You have to push in and say, well, I'm not happy no matter how much I get from Him. I'm not happy. I'm always happy because I, I'm, I have His fullness. I have no... And I'm not saying that I'm a sad person or depressed. I'm saying I'm not happy with what I have. I want more. But I can't ask God to give me more because He's given me all of it. I have to become less. And the way I become less is by going in with my spirit, going in with my soul, and eventually going in with my body. And when my body goes in and I come back, I'm glorified. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. And I don't want to carry on for too much longer because we have got two other sessions that I want to, want to go on. So there's going to be some repetition. But just the idea that Father brings with body, soul, and spirit, the three-part the three part man, is for you to understand who and how you're supposed to walk in the fullness of what the Father has. Let's stand and pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you that we can come before your throne and we can say thank you for revelation. And we can th- say thank you for understanding, Lord. Thank you for your seven spirits that is... Uh, yeah, over the last couple of weeks, that has been <coughs> active in your sons and your daughters, Lord. I can see it <coughs> in the spirit, Lord. I can see because it's been proclaimed over the city, there has been an activation, Father. There's been a desire in your people to run deeper with you. That's why I always say with these meetings, I don't care if there's 10, 20, or 100 people, or if there's five, it doesn't matter. It's about the proclamation, that which is spoken out into the spirit realm, Father, that which echoes into that realm and starts drawing people into the deep things that you call us to. Lord, I pray that every person in this room will have a greater understanding of the spirit and who we are as a spirit being, the access that we have and how easy it is to just step in, Father, how easy it is to just walk with you and see your face and touch you and, and know you in levels that our natural can't perceive, Father. But in the, at the end of the day, we have our natural even understanding. We have our body even walking in with you father there's a there's a, a glory that comes with who you are and i pray that there will be an understanding from from all of this to go into your sons and your daughters lord we thank you for who you are we thank you holy spirit that you're always there keeping us available and open pouring into us pouring into us father you are so gentle your judgment is so perfect we thank you that you judge us we thank you that you judge us only once we are inside of you because the judgment that takes place inside of you with your with you being the covering and the blood of jesus silver and in us that brings us a place of perfection because that's your desire is to perfect your church but when you judge the enemy that brings accusations against us you literally sear him you literally cut him off and his works is stopped that's why we have those papers that comes against the work to the enemy, Father. And I thank you for the court of war. I thank you for the court of uh, the mobile court that we have access into, Father. No matter who we are, no matter what we are, we have access into that court. And I believe that you want to be bringing your people into a place of understanding in the spirit, a revelation, full out revelation of who and what we are in the spirit. Lord, I pray that you will just keep on pouring into these awesome men and women before me that I love so dearly, Lord. I bless them and I ask, Father, that you will continually grow in them and let them continually grow in you. In Jesus' name, amen.